All right, everybody, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to get into Numbers chapter 28. And the repetition of several laws formerly enacted, which is made in this chapter, was seasonable and necessary, not only on account of their importance and the frequent neglect of them, but because a new generation had sprung up since their first institution, and because the Israelites were about to be settled in the land where those ordinances were to be observed. All right, so taking the first eight verses, the morning and the evening offering. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say to them, My offering, my food for my offerings, made by fire as a sweet aroma to me, you shall be careful to offer to me at their appointed time. And you shall say to them, This is the offering made by fire, which you shall offer to the Lord, to male lamb in their first year without blemish, day by day, as a regular burnt offering. The one lamb you shall offer in the morning, the other lamb you shall offer in the evening, and one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour as a grain offering mixed with one-fourth of a hen of pressed oil. It is a regular burnt offering which was ordained at Mount Sinai for a sweet aroma, an offering made by fire to the Lord, and its drink offering shall be one-fourth of a hen for each lamb. In a holy place you shall pour out the drink to the Lord as an offering. The other lamb you shall offer in the evening as the morning grain offering and its drink offering you shall offer it as an offering made by fire a sweet aroma to the lord so israel was commanded to bring a male lamb in the morning and in the evening and each day began and ended with the statement of the need for atonement by sacrifice and expression of devotion to the lord this reminds us that it is appropriate to begin and end our day with a statement of trust in God's atonement and expression of our devotion to Him. So we should be like the psalmist and seek the Lord in the morning. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. In Psalm chapter 5, verse 3. But to you I have cried out, O Lord, and in the morning my prayer comes before you. In Psalm 88 verse 13. And we should be like the psalmist and seek the Lord in the evening, right? When I remember you in my on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, Psalm 63 verse 6. Let my prayer be set before you as an incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice, Psalm 141 verse 2. And we should be like the psalmist and seek the Lord all the time, right? Evening and morning and at noon I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice, Psalm 55 verse 17. So the Levit- Levitical offerings were the voluntary. You had the sweet savor to God. That was the burnt meal and peace offering. And then you had the compulsory uh, non-sweet savor. That's for us. And that's the sin offering and the trespass offering. The large numbers of sacrifices show the weight of sin which must be removed before God can even be approached. They also speak of God's great grace as he had provided Israel with riches, flocks, and herds in abundance to enable them to bring his sacrifices. All right, verses 9 through 10, the Sabbath offering. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs in the first year without blemish and two tenths of an ephah of fine flour as a grain offering mixed with oil with its drink offering. This is the burnt offering for every Sabbath besides the regular burnt offering with its drink offering. So every Sabbath day, an additional lamb was sacrificed every morning and every evening. This is a constant reminder. And so there is no previous mention of a Sabbath burnt offering, which was additional to the daily sacrifices. All right. So verses 11 through 15, you're going to have the monthly offering. So at the beginnings of your months, you shall present a burnt offering to the Lord, two young bulls, one ram, seven lambs in the first year without blemish, three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour as a grain offering, mixed with oil for each bull, two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour as a grain offering, mixed with oil for the one ram, and one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering for each lamb as a burnt offering of sweet aroma, an offering made by fire to the Lord. Their drink offering shall be half a hen, of wine for a bull, one third of a hen for a ram, and one fourth of a hen for a lamb. This is the burnt offering for each month throughout the months of the year. Also, one kid of the goats as a sin offering to the Lord shall be offered besides the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. So, 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 5 gives an example of how this offering might become part of a monthly feast for the leaders of the nation. And later in Israel's history, the new moon festivals may have become opportunities for excess for licentious behavior. In the prophets, there are times when God says uh, to his Aaron, 
wandering people, I hate your new moons in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 14. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 14 it shows how these festivals became corrupted, right? Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. So we can come to the same place today where God is tired of us going to church, especially if it is unprofitable. So new moons were sacred festivals, though not possessing the character of solemn feasts, and they were distinguished by the blowing of trumpets over the sacrifices in Numbers chapter 10, verse 10, the suspension of all labor except the domestic occupations of women in Amos chapter 8, verse 5, the celebration of public worship in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 23, social and family feasts in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 5, and these observations are not prescribed in a law, but became the practice of a later time. All right, verses 16 through 25 you're going to have the offerings related to seasonal feasts offerings at passover and the feast of unleavened bread verses 16 through 25 on the 14th day of the first month is the passover of the lord and the 15th day of this month is the feast unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days on the first day you shall have a holy convocation you shall do no customary work and you shall present an offering made by fire as a burnt offering to the lord two young bulls one ram and seven lambs in the first year be sure they are without blemish their grain offering Offering shall be of fine flour mixed with oil. Three tenths of an ephah you shall offer for a bull, and two tenths for a ram. You shall offer one tenth of an ephah for each of the seven lambs. Also one goat as a sin offering to make atonement for you. You shall offer these besides the burnt offering of the morning, which is for a regular burnt offering. In this manner you shall offer the food of the offering made by fire daily for seven days, as a sweet aroma to the Lord. It shall be offered besides the regular burnt offering and its drink offering and on the seventh day you shall have a holy convocation you shall do no customary work so in addition to the lamb each household was to offer to god the priests were also required to bring these offerings to god at the time of passover on behalf of the entire nation so let's look at the feast of israel you have the spring feast uh, starting in the first month of nisan at passover on the 14th the feast of unleavened bread is the 15th plus seven days and then you had the feast of first fruits which was Sunday and uh, the 14th. And then you have the fall feast, which was on the seventh month in Tishri. You had Yom Tehura, the Feast of Trumpets on the first, Yom Kippur, and the Day of Atonement on the tenth. And then you have Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles on the fifteenth, right, plus seven. Passover examined on the tenth of Nisan. It was offered between the evenings, right, the fourteenth. It was Friday the thirteenth on the Gentile calendar. Not a bone to be broken on Passover. And Jesus is our Passover. Note John chapter 1 and verse 29 and 36 and 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. You're going to have the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's uh, Hag Hamatzah. Leaven was a symbol for sin. You had three matzahs, one broken uh, and hidden. And Joseph, the baker and the wine steward. You had the four cups. They symbolize the bringing out, the delivering, the blessing, and the taking out. And so well, let's look at the Feast of First Fruits, uh, Leviticus 23, verse 11, the morrow after the Sabbath, after Passover, right? That was Sunday, and then the morning of the ultimate first fruits. And when did the flood of Noah end, right? Genesis chapter 8, verse 4. And the ark rested on the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. So why did the Holy Spirit want us to know this very date? You had two calendars. The civil calendar, Tishri, was in the fall of Rosh Hashanah. Then you had the religious calendar, with Nisan, in the spring. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 2, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So, Jesus crucified on the 14th of Nisan. He was in the grave for three days. He resurrected on the 17th of Nisan, the seventh month of the Genesis calendar. So Noah's new beginning on the planet Earth was the anniversary anticipation of our new beginning in Christ Jesus.
All right, moving on. Verses 26 through 31, offerings at the Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost. Also, on the day of first fruits, when you bring a new grain offering to the Lord at your Feast of Weeks, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work. You shall present a burnt offering as a sweet aroma to the Lord. Two young bulls, one ram, and seven lambs in their first year, with their grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil, three tenths of an ephah for each bull, two tenths for one ram, and one tenth for each of the seven lambs also one kid of the goats to make atonement for you be sure they are without blemish you shall present them with their drink offerings beside the regular burnt offering with its grain offering so the primary meaning of the feast of pentecost was not atonement but thanksgiving for the harvest yet every feast of israel was to carry with it the idea of atonement just the same our own life should be lived in constant awareness of the atonement made for us All right, and that ties up Numbers 28. Next time we'll get into Numbers 29, covering the fall feasts. Thank you for joining me.